Today we'll look how to put video on a screen in DaVinci Resolve. You can start with a video like this and make it look like this. So I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and I have this video of a car here. You can see it's pretty cool. Now I want to composite it into two separate videos. In one case, my video isn't moving at all. You can see if I scrub through it, it's just kind of a static shot. We'll look at that scenario first. Then we'll look at this other example here. If I move through it, you can see that the video is actually moving. We'll look at how to do that second. So first, let's do the static shot. I'll go to the edit page here. And I'll drag the video of the laptop onto the timeline here. So there we have it. Now you'll notice there is a green screen on this laptop, but that doesn't really matter for this method. You can replace any static screen with the technique I'll show you. So with my video selected, I'll now go to the Fusion tab. And that is this tool down here, Fusion. So I'll click on it. Now I know Fusion can be a little intimidating at first, but it has some very powerful features and it's useful to learn it. So right now I have these two viewers on my screen. I just want to use the one. So I'm just going to select this single viewer here. I'll zoom out a bit. Now down here, we have our nodes. We have our input node, media in, and our output node, media out. And because there's that white dot on the right side, that means it's being shown in our viewer here. Now I want to bring in my car video. Now it'll need to be merged into this flow here. So first I'll use a merge node. On the toolbar, one of the default nodes is a merge node. It's this one here. I'll click and drag it over the yellow line. And I'll let go. So far, nothing has really changed. But let's now bring in the car video. The easiest way to do that is to enable our media pool here. So I'll click media pool. And you can always see a list of your videos here. I want the car to be in this flow, so I'll click and drag it in. And I'll let go. And you can see that it is a media in node. It's named media in 2 because it has to be a unique name. I'll close the media pool. Now, if you haven't used the viewers too much before, you can actually view the double viewers by clicking this here. And then if you want on media in, you can put it on the left side by clicking this dot. So this is how you can show different videos in different viewers. But right now we only need to see one thing, so I'll just close that. I'll also rename this media in node car just so it's clear. So with it selected, I'll press F2 and I'll just call it car. Now the gray box on the nodes is the output. And I want to merge the output of the car node into the merge node here. So I'll just click this gray box, drag it down to the merge node, let go. And you can see our new output here. Basically, we're merging the car video on top of the laptop video. So we're getting close to our goal, but of course, we're still not quite there yet. We want to bend the corners of our car video so they match the edges of the laptop. And to do that, we'll use a node called Corner Positioner. Now, if you know the name of a node, you want to quickly search for it, you can hit Shift Space. And you can type the name. So I'll type corner positioner. Here it is. And I'll click add. And you can see the node got added in the middle here. Now let me redo that for a second. Let's say you tried to add the corner positioner, but it didn't go in the right place. So I'll double click this here. I'll click add. And it ended up somewhere over here. What you can do is you can click on the node, hold shift, and then drag it between these two points. When your arrow is over the line, you can let go, and then it'll be in the middle there. So that's a way you can add the node in between two other nodes if it wasn't automatically put there. So we're pretty close to reaching our goal here. We have the corner positioner UI on the screen, and I can reposition the corners. So I'll drag them in the general area of the laptop. Then I'll zoom in a bit, let's expand it, and I'll get it in the exact position I want. So I'll drag the corners so they match the corners of the screen. I want to cover that green part. Just get it right around there. And now I'll play the video here, and you can see it's in the screen. So this is the flow for a basic screen replacement. And if you go to the Edit tab, you can play. And here we have our final result. Now let's look at how to handle a moving screen. Let's put our moving video onto the timeline. So I'll play through, and you can see in this case, the screen is moving. Now when you get a video that's moving like this, it's good to have some type of markers on the screen here. You can see these crosshairs. That's gonna make it easier for the system to track the movement. So once again, with our video selected, let's go to the Fusion tab. I'll click Fusion. The first node we're going to add is called a Planar Tracker. The keyword here is planar. This helps us work with moving flat surfaces like a screen or a wall. 
So once again, I'll search for the node. I'll hold shift and press space. Then I'll type planar tracker. And the one we want is the planar tracker. So I'll double click this. I'll press add. And here we have our node. I'll move it over here. Now we want our node to be between the media in and media out. So again, with the node selected, I'll hold shift, drag it in between. And you want your arrow to touch the line. Let go. And it's in between there. Let me move this up. Now there's two steps to using this tool. First, we have to generate the tracking data. This step will look at the moving shapes in our video, like these crosses over here. And we'll try to build the tracking data that we can use to move other things against it. After that, we'll take that tracking data and connect it to our car video. That way the car video can move with the tracking data. So let's do the first step and generate that tracking information. I'll select my planar tracker here. And over here we have our inspector tab. If you don't see it, make sure inspector is selected. So click that button. Now I recommend taking your playhead and putting it somewhere in the middle of your clip. Later on, I'll explain a little bit more about that, but it's good to start from the middle. Now with your tracker node selected, make sure the operation mode says track here. It probably says that by default. And then under it, you want to click this button here that says set. So I'll click set. You can see it specifies the reference time next to it here. Now my cursor turns into this crosshair. I'm going to zoom into my screen here. Now you want to click and drag out the area that's going to be moving. So I'll click and drag around the frame here. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't going to contain our video, but it does have to contain the moving parts. So I think that's a pretty good selection there. Now over here, I'm going to click this button that says track to end. So I'll click this button and you can see it starts processing. If you look closely at our screen, you can see these little dots that it creates. Those little green dots, that's the tracking data. And it's trying to find it from frame to frame. So we did the second half of our video. Let's do the first half now. So I'm going to click the go button. So when I click go, that resets our playhead back to where we set it originally. And the reason we start from the middle and do the second half and then the first half is it just helps minimize the drift that can occur if you do the whole video end to end. It's not required, but it makes it a little more accurate. So now what we'll do is track to the beginning. So I'll click this button here, track to start, and I'll press it. And you can see now it's playing backwards. It's generating the data. And now it's done. So you notice all these white marks on our timeline here. That represents our tracking information. Now for step two, connecting the tracking data to our car. So once again, I'll go to the media pool. I'll take my car and I'll drag it on the canvas here. I'll rename it car with F2, car. And now I'll connect the car to the planar tracker. So I'll just drag the output of the car to the planar tracker and let go. Now you're not seeing the car on our screen yet. And that's because we need to change the planar tracker's job now. Before it was creating the data, now it needs to use the data to apply it to the car. So I'll select my planar tracker again, and now I'll change the operation mode. Before it was track, now I'll say corner pin. So I'll press this, and now you can see our car here. So because it's set to corner pin, it knows to take the input of the car and put it on our screen. Now, of course, we want to adjust it a bit, so I'll zoom in, and I can grab the corners and put them in the right place. Put them just outside the corner of the screen, like so. And now if I go back to the beginning of my video and I play it, you can see my car video is moving with the screen. Now there's a bunch of things that can go wrong with this process and I've probably done all of them at some point in my life. Let me show you some difficulties you might have. First, let's add the planar tracker back in. I'll connect it in the middle here, hold shift. Now I'll put my cursor in the middle here. And like before, I'll click play to end. And you get this message, invalid pattern polygon. This means you forgot to draw the shape around your screen. So I'll click OK. And I'll zoom in. And I'll click around my screen here. So that will solve that problem. Now let's click play to end again. And now we get a new error. This is because we forgot to set the position. So I'll click OK. I'll click set here. And then I'll play to the end. So now it's actually working. Now let's say you want to do the first half of your video. So you move the playhead down to the middle somewhere. 
and then you click track backwards. And now you get this error. This is also related to the fact that you didn't set the position. So I'll click OK. Remember that if you set the position before, you can click Go just to go back to that frame. So it's 240, so I'll click Go. And now it goes back there. But if you ever move off this playhead somewhere else, and then you try to play back to the beginning again, it's not going to work. So I'll click OK. Remember to press Go to go back to where you set before. So I'll click Go. And I'll press Play at the beginning. And now it's working. And finally, remember how to connect the car. So I'll go to Media Pool. I'll drag in the car video, Media 2. I'll connect this to the Planar Tracker. And remember that you have to change the mode of the Planar Tracker. So I'll go back to the Planar Tracker here. The Operation Mode, I'll set it to Corner Pin. And now we have our car video visible. You just have to reposition it to make sense here. And then press play and it will go. You'll also want to make sure you don't run out of one of your videos. So if I play this here, you see my car video eventually ends. So make sure you cut off the clip before you run out of footage. Now there are additional things you could do to make your composite look more realistic. You could change the saturation and the brightness, but that will be a topic for another video. If you have any questions about what we looked at here, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.